we got up at 3.30 to see Everest. That is my bag covered in ice. Cause bloody cold. The hike up was, uh, for me, it was brutal. Uh, bad gut. Not a good start today. Should have probably stayed at home in bed, but you know, it needs must. So I really struggled with it up. But now I'm here. My gut's still bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna go down now. Reality check, heading down to Ferice, uh, a total of 4,200 I believe. So for myself that's over a thousand meters in descent if we include the top of the 5550 climb this morning. Although that was brutal, I don't want to talk about that ever again. Uh, if you come down to Ferice as well, this is uh, the recommendation of your guide. Whoop. Number one, be careful with your footing. Once you get past that glacier with that awesome makeshift bridge, you come down literally the side of the mountain and it's just loose stone, large stones and sand uh, the whole way down. So it's very slippery and it's very steep. Look, let me show you. Oh, you can't really see because, well, that's how steep it is. You can't see, but yeah, we're getting there. Uh, when you go up any altitude, the recommendation is don't ever exceed 600 meters uh, due to higher risk of, of altitude sickness. Oh, yeah, altitude sickness. Um, but on, obviously on the descent, it's not so much of an issue. However, what we have found out is a couple of people start to suffer from headaches down the back as they were coming down through altitude. So, but most of it's through a valley so that could just be the cold wind in there. As you get to the bottom of that landslide, you do get a nice view of the valley though. So over in the far distance is Ferice, you'll see that shortly, uh, and the clouds run in the sky. At the bottom of the valley, you literally get to walk through the field of yaks. They're big creatures. They're like big fluffy cows, but not like the Scottish type along the rocky path, to say the least, and to my right is a stream. And I look down and I can see this. I'm not gonna lie, man, <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> Being a yak farmer, and you've got a tiny little hut out in the middle of this. You know, I like these guys. And you wake up and you get that. If I could get that with internet, you'd never see me again. It takes forever to walk to this damn village. I mean, I'm looking like a ripoff of Steve Irwin, and I've got to walk on a hard packed mud. I can't even do any like animal stuff. Nobody let me touch his yak. But we're getting there. The floor is a mix between cobble bridges that are uneven and uh, hard packed earth slash sand. The wind seems to be constant. Makes sense, it's a valley. So day nine started slightly differently to any other day we've done on this hike. Um, I'm talking quite quiet because the tea house I'm in, the walls are wafer thin. So hopefully you can still hear me clear enough. I started today at 3.30 in the morning. So I could hike two hours up Kalapatar to get pristine pictures of Everest as the sun rose. I couldn't get any video footage of this hike up because it was literally pitch black. You had to wear your torch or something just so you could see where you were going. <clears throat> yep, 
if you don't need to do Calipatar, I probably wouldn't do it and I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you don't need to go all the way up to get good shots. Uh, Everest is bloody big. You can get a good picture from a lot of different angles. And for me, personally, going up there at 4 o'clock in the morning, all uphill as well, it was brutal. And it was very cold. I can't even admit to say that I'm glad I did it. I don't feel like there was any reward from it whatsoever. But, you know, I've done it, so maybe it will save you guys the time and the hassle. Uh, and also, it's better to go in the evening because as the sun sets, the whole of the summit of Everest lights up and it glows. Uh, so if you have to choose, if you want to do it, do it in the evening. Get better pictures. Then the day took a tragic twist. We came back down about 7am. <coughs> I walk into the room, kick him out of bed, I'm like, get up you lazy bitch, let's go. And we're downstairs and we're in the tea house and we're having breakfast. And she sat beside me. And she's like, I feel sick. It's like, okay, are you gonna be sick? She's like, yes. Immediately got up, ran outside, and chucked up everywhere outside. Drew Barr, our guide, went out and spoke with her. He then came in to me, and he was like, go pack your bags, we need to go immediately. So M was suffering severe altitude sickness today. Um, and we had to drop several hundred meters as quickly as we could, just to relieve the pressure and the tension and the nastiness that she was feeling. So even though we had a nice hike in the morning, nice hike in the morning, um, the day took a bit of a tragic twist and we went from zero to 100 very fast. Because of that, my prioritization of the day stepped away from video footage and it was monitoring M the way down in Labuche, which was about 200 meters and she wasn't getting any better. So we then kicked up the ass and we moved all the way down to Fariche, which is where we are currently at now. Um, Fariche is for about 4-4, four, 4-2. Four, four um, but as soon as we were getting closer and closer and we tipped over like the 300 mark, her symptoms started, it was almost instantaneous. I could see the difference so quickly. The phone came out for some photos. She started asking questions. Her pace picked up. If you do suffer from altitude sickness, you know, just come down two, three, four hundred meters. It's not easy because by then you will have a banging headache, like banging headache. Uh, but you have to push through it and you have to get down. So we are now in Fariche. I still can't say these big words. I know, right? Uh, I'm looking like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer because apparently my nose burnt today. Yeah, Em's burnt her nose as well. Yeah, you can see it. Can you see? Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> Coming down for Riche was quite nice. Um, once her symptoms started to ease up, I took this. And I also took this. And we also took this one. The tea house was pretty simple. The room's pretty simple. Uh, the toilets are the same as what we've been coming across, Western style with Nepalese flush or Turkish, depends, you know, whatever tickles you fancy. Although day nine started off with some fantastic views, priorities change, you know, and these things happen. So I wanted this to be raw as it could, this is raw as it gets. <laughs> I think we've got another, I think we got three days left of a hike four days left of the hike, maybe, give or take. Uh, but it's all downhill, essentially. Tomorrow is across to Porche, um, and apparently Druba is going to take us. It's supposed to be quite high, a bit like this. It's up on the hill uh, ledge, so we should get some really nice uh, pictures and some really nice footage. I do want to highlight that your descent may be completely different to the one I capture here today. It all depends on how busy the season is, what time of year you come, uh, your guide, essentially the company you use. There are a lot of factors. But I'll show you what we have, I'll show you what we experience, and in the meantime, we'll keep it as real as we can. My nose looks so red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, till next time. See you in day 10.